Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the West Suffolk series, 103 parishes set in some of the most beautiful English countryside, and there's some good ones in this area. Shall we go have a look? Of course. Hello folks, welcome back to Suffolk again, and we're in a different part of Suffolk to the one you're used to. We're in West Suffolk for the very first time, and we're beginning this episode at the village sign here, which you can see behind me there. Now that has got on it a woman riding a horse, and that woman is potentially one of the most famous women this country has ever had in its time. That's Boudicca, and this is where Boudicca lived. Exning. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like, and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Exning, Gixness people. Welcome everyone to West Suffolk for the first of a run of eight parishes between the towns of Newmarket and Mildenhall. To kick things off, we're in the most westerly village anywhere in Suffolk, Exning, just north of the A14. That road separates it from Newmarket and together the two can be found in what is almost a Suffolk exclave, surrounded on three sides by Cambridgeshire. Part of this very parish used to be in Cambridgeshire until very recently, in fact, until boundary changes widened the portion of the land connecting Exning to the rest of Suffolk. Three notable historical figures are associated with this place. Two of them are saints, whilst the third is one of the most famous women this country has ever had, Boudicca. Exning was believed to be the capital of the Iron Age and Early Roman Age tribe, the Iceni, who were led by Boudicca. As their queen, Boudicca would lead an uprising against the Romans, something that places her in the annals of British history as a heroine, despite the fact it was unsuccessful. The village has changed considerably since her time, but that piece of history is still upheld in at least two ways around Exning today. Let's learn more about her as we walk around village number one in West Suffolk. We start by driving into Exning via the A14 Newmarket Bypass, which forms the parish boundary between the village and the town famed for horse racing. It's somewhat ironic that there is a boundary between the two. The only reason Newmarket even exists is thanks to a group of 13th century Exning merchants who were hungry for new customers. They took their goods south, literally setting up a new market, hence the name, on a road between Cambridge and Bury St Edmunds. Until the late 19th century, both Exning and Newmarket were on an island of Suffolk within Cambridgeshire, but in 1895, the parish of Newmarket All Saints was moved into Suffolk, which created a land bridge to the rest of the county. Still, this area remains semi-detached, and all the roads out of Exning, except the one into Newmarket Town Centre, lead into Cambridgeshire. We're heading into Exning via Windmill Hill. There's no windmill here, but there was way back in 1293. Unfortunately though, that's the last known record of a windmill anywhere in this part of Suffolk.
our walk starts at one of two village signs which depict Queen Boudicca. Boudicca was the leader of the Iceni tribe, who it's believed by historians made Exning their capital. They were a significant British power in early Roman times. Boudicca would lead the Iceni in a revolt in AD 60 and 61, destroying the Roman city of Colchester and killing upwards of 70,000 Roman soldiers in doing so. Even though her revolt was ultimately unsuccessful, Boudicca is considered a British national heroine and a symbol of the struggle for justice and independence. Of course, in Boudicca's time, Exning wouldn't have looked anything like it does today. Let's have a wander around the modern village. This is Glebe Drive at the western end of civilization and one of the newest parts of the village. Exning has a population well in excess of 2,000 and it's growing considerably still. Good thing then there's a parish notice board here to keep everyone in the know. Tick off Exning folks, one down, 102 to go in West Suffolk. Glebe Drive also features this small play area, but there's a bigger one yet to come. Still, the new houses continue to be built out here. The area in your shop now isn't yet shown on any map software, rather it's still an open field. The western edge of Exning is all fields currently, although during wartime, planes would have been a regular feature in the skies overhead. Nearby Newmarket Heath was used as an airfield for Stirling bombers of No. 75 New Zealand Squadron, although little evidence remains of this chapter in Exning's history today. Let's make our way through some trees now towards the local playing fields. The footpath which encircles them passes this nursery, stepping stones, before giving way to the village's main playground and recreational space. Thanks to the new builds we've just walked past, this now marks the middle of the village. A few years ago this would have been considered to have been on the village's western extremity. You can walk straight through this to St Wendred's Way, but the path splits and then turns through some more trees to link up with another one running south towards our next street. Let's follow that one for a while. It passes an entrance to the local football pitch. Exning United play here. They're members of the Cambridgeshire County League, despite being located in Suffolk. The path alongside the pitch brings you to Lacey's Lane, a typical Edwardian terrace street built sometime between 1886 and 1914. Behind these houses are the local allotments, which occupy quite a sizeable patch of land, and at the western end of the road is the local cemetery. For us though, we're heading east as we start to form a loop around the main core of Exning Village. At the end of the road you'll find the phone box outside this house, which shares a junction with Ducks Lane. We'll understand a little more about the name of that street shortly. Next though, it's Chapel Street, where you'll find Harriton Court Stables. Originally a private residence, Harriton House was a large building with landscape gardens and meandering paths which led to the stables. They were built during the 1880s by John George Lambton, the third Earl of Durham. They're still in use and are connected with Newmarket Racecourse. Now as well as Boudicca, Exning has connections to two saints. One of them is St Wendreda, an Anglo-Saxon nun who lived in the 7th century and was reputedly the daughter of King Anna of East Anglia. Exning is believed to have been her birthplace. This street, St Wendred's Way, is named after her. Exning had a spring called St Wendred as well, but sometimes, alternatively, it was known as St Mindred's Well. Local legend says it had healing powers and was said to be good for ailments of the eyes. Newmarket jockeys used to take horses to it to drink before a race. Now despite this name plaque, we're back on Chapel Street here. This is the old ballroom, which once formed part of Harriton House. The main house has now been split into apartments, and during World War II it was used as the HQ of RAF No. 3 Group Bomber Command. Directly opposite this you'll find the first of Exting's three pubs, the Wheat Sheaf Inn. This is reputedly built on the site of a 17th century alehouse, coaching inn, or something similar. As well as being a pub, this is also a hotel. It's both dog and child friendly too. Bonus. We've now walked along Church Lane to where it meets Brookside. Check out this lamppost. They're quite fancy in Exning. 
The brook, known as the New River to the locals, looks better than this usually. The rain makes it seem a bit drab. It's important though because every year a duck race is held on the New River. It's one of the most popular events on the calendar in Exning and it's accompanied by activities in the churchyard and the church hall. We're approaching both of those buildings now, as well as this, the rectory. The church hall recently underwent a refurbishment and it's Exning's main communal building. It's right next to the Church of St Martin, familiar to anyone who passes Exning on the A14 thanks to its tall tower. St Martin's is a 12th century building and it's unusual for East Anglia because of its cruciform shape. I was surprised the dedication isn't to St Etheldreda, the second saint who was allegedly born in Exning and who lends her name to the cathedral city of Ely. Legend has it that St Etheldreda was baptised in St Wendred as well. After walking through the churchyard we're now on Church Street and it's a left turn at this pedestrian crossing as we head back north. Church Street doesn't have a lot to write home about but you will find a garage along here if nothing else. Named Wests, it's an approved used car dealer that's been in business since 1926, right here in Exning. Church Street is also where you can get a local bus. The village lies on the route of the number 11, which runs between Cambridge and Newmarket via the latter's branch of Tesco. Next we come to the Rosary Hotel. Originally a country house, this was converted into a hotel in the 1970s. In the early 20th century, Colonel Francis William George Gore and his wife Lady Constance were its owners. They lived primarily in London, but used the Rosary when they attended Newmarket races. Next we have the second pub, this time the White Horse, which has been run by the same family since 1935. When beer was still delivered by horse, Draymond used to stay here overnight and return to the brewery the following day. Over the mini roundabout nearby is the War Memorial, a Celtic cross erected in 1921 with 105 names on it in total, two of which were civilians. Next we follow Swan Lane along a raised footpath that flanks the edge of what appears to be either a field or some parkland, I'm not totally sure which. Landmarks aren't plentiful along here but you do have the modern cul-de-sac Swan Grove before you reach Swan Lane Business Park. This is dominated by TSR, the UK's leading installer and supplier of Subaru engine conversions for Volkswagens. Where the road bends north is the third and final pub, the White Swan. This is a multi-roomed family orientated pub with a separate lounge, games area and restaurant. Occasionally live music can be found here too. Next we head back up Chapel Street briefly to catch the chapel itself. Built in the early 1800s this has been unused as a religious building since 2014 and it's now a house. It's a similar story over the road, where there are at least two other properties which are now residential, but look like they were once shops. Speaking of shops, it's time to check out all of Exning's major amenities now as we head firstly back up Chapel Street and on to Oxford Street, where most of them are. Kicking us off we have this quaint little building, it's a hair salon called Fringes. This is located next to Exning's primary school. A man by the name of William White built this in the mid 1870s. He was a well known local architect who designed the attractive Victorian buildings. The school was built to educate 447 pupils in two separate buildings and so it continues to do so today. Many businesses enter a duck in the annual duck race. The local chippy, Rumble's Fish Bar, always do. These offer a delivery service you know, you can't knock that. Next door we have the local dentist, Olive Dental Care, and across the road there's a shop that's had many uses. It's a barber shop at present, but it used to be a tattoo parlour and then before that an upholstery shop. It was built in 1803 according to the plaque over its door. Rounding off this central area we have the local grocery store and post office as we head next for Mill Lane. There is one final shop actually, Regency Cakes, a local supplier of traditional and contemporary wedding party and celebration cakes. We've arrived at Burwell Corner where Oxford Street meets Mill Lane. 
Unlike the windmill we spoke about earlier, the mill this refers to was a water mill and it stood on the New River, just north of the village centre. The road has now turned westward again, and aside from a short spur called North End, all that remains for us is along this stretch of the B1103 as it heads into Cambridgeshire. Not far up here you pass a street with a familiar name, Iceni Way, obviously a reference to the tribe led by Boudicca. Between it and the green where we started, it's entirely residential. If you were to keep going though through this area and into Burwell, the first village over the border into Cambridgeshire, you would pass the site of an old railway station. That would be Exning Holt, which was on the Cambridge to Mildenhall line. Long since lifted, there's very little trace of the line or the station now, although its route can be traced on aerial photographs. Okay, so we've made it all the way around the route. We're around, we are around Exning, and I, as you can see, I'm uh, a little bit drenched. The rain doesn't bother me. The new viewers out there might think I'm a little bit mad for doing this, but I'm used to this weather. It's what happens. And you know what? I'm going to be wet in the next episode as well because I'm going there straight from here. So yeah, I'm going to be wearing the same clothes and look like the same drowned rat. We're not quite finished with Exning though. There is one more thing I need to do in this episode, and that's take a drive out to Landwade, which is also within the parish boundaries. As I suspected beforehand, I couldn't access much of Landwade. This road is the only public thoroughfare, the rest is within the estate of Landwade Hall. Landwade was a former civil parish and it used to be in Cambridgeshire. Its name probably derives in part from Gewade, an old English word meaning ford. Parishes of its size were often absorbed in the Middle Ages, but Landwade survived thanks to the rebuilding of its church, pictured here by Walter Cotton. He was the lord of the manor and in the 15th century it served as a burial place for his family. Landwade Hall, a large house that was partially destroyed by bombs during World War II, was the ancestral home of the Cotton family until they moved to Maddingley in the 18th century. The church, Grade 2 listed and dedicated to St Nicholas, is privately owned and located in the grounds of the hall. The church was among the buildings transferred to Suffolk in 1994 when alterations were made to the border. And that's it for Exning. See you back here next week for West Suffolk number 2. Thanks for watching this video folks. Don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.